So uh, this is just going to be, you know, um, not an overview of all the different ways to do a cement spacer. This is just going to be my technique, and, and we can talk about that. My, uh, my disclosures, uh, research support from Pfizer and Smith and & Nephew and consulting arrangements with Smith & Nephew. So I think, you know, when, when, you're, when you're planning to do uh, an antibiotic spacer, you have to make a decision. Are you going to use an articulating spacer or are you going to use a static spacer? I prefer an articulating spacer if I can do it. Um, I think, you know, in the knees, patients prefer to be able to bend their knee. They, I think patients who can't bend their knee are generally pretty miserable. Uh, I think the literature has shown us that revising an articulating spacer is much easier than, than revising a static spacer. Um, and then I think th the next question is, what type of spacer? So you just saw um, Dr. Watson's uh, uh, spacer. The, the type I use is a little different. I prefer an all cement spacer that I make in the operating room with a silicone mold. And I'm going to show you a video of, of that technique. So uh, you, we have to do an aggressive debridement. That's probably the most important part of the operation. You have to do an aggressive debridement. And then once I've done an adequate debridement, then I start looking at the what's left of the bone. I have some trials. I'll use the trials to assess the size of the femoral component and the tibial component. I can gauge the, the thickness of the extension gap with a femoral trial. For the hip, uh, it's, a, it's a ream and brooch system, and so the, the final brooch will give me the size of the, of the hip spacer and, and the, uh, the, the ball for the um, head. And uh, so this is, uh, this is the set of trials I use.